Hi everyone, I just got a lapel mic so I hope that it works, I hope that you can hear me clearly. Thank you for watching this video. I know that it's been a long time since I was on YouTube but I have a valid excuse. I got married on June 1st and it was a beautiful wedding, I'm really happy with how it went. Now that it's all over, it was wonderful, the wedding was wonderful, but I'm glad that it's over and now I can focus and write and record and study and practice and teach as much as my heart desires, I'm so happy. And I figured in today's video, I would show you around my new music cave, see all the details, all the things I've done with the place. And at the end of this video, uh, I want to be upfront about this. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid to do this video. But at the end, I am going to do a product review because BenQ, I don't know if you've heard of them before, but they sent me this amazing Bluetooth speaker and I'm going to do a little, little mini review at the end and uh, hopefully some of you will find it interesting. Without any further ado, I will show you around. All right, are you guys ready? I'm gonna open the door. Ta-da! So, over here, I stole Josh's bookcase and used it in here. Up on the top, this is the first painting that I was ever really proud of. It's honestly probably not that good, but I don't know. I'm not a professional. Anyhow, right here on the left, you see the Bluetooth speaker that I'll be talking about later. On the right is a picture of my grandmother and I. She was my very first cello teacher. Started me with lessons when I was five. Down here we have, oh, that's my, my Dr. Beat metronome there on the right. It's wonderful. And then here I have my trunk full of um, memorabilia from, I guess, uh, career successes. So like article printouts and uh, letters from students and fans. Yes, guys, I save that stuff if you send it to me. It's very important and valuable. My base, my upright base that I, uh, I guess technically stole from my dad, but uh, I asked him about it later and he was okay with me taking it, so he'll ask for it back whenever he needs it, I guess. Over here, my grandfather gave these to me when I was really little. He told me that they were original manuscripts from some famous composer, like Beethoven, but I don't think that's true. I believe that they're photocopies of original manuscripts. If any of you guys happen to recognize this handwriting, let me know. Here is my aforementioned grandfather whenever he was quite a young lad. He actually started touring with a big band whenever he was 15. He was this child prodigy on the trumpet, and ever since he's been uh, conducting, conducting symphony orchestras, he conducted in Hawaii for a while. And these are my uh, two, well, I have more than two friends, but uh, these are my two favorite music friends, Kelsey and Anna. They're really, really good musicians, and we um, go around to nursing homes uh, playing music for them, and. We play music for other charitable events. It's part of our group. I'm not sure what to call us yet. We're called the Heart of Music Collective. We're not technically legally an organization yet, but we're working on it. So anyways, they're helping me get that going. This was hand painted by Leonardo Frigo. He's an artist based in London, and he found me on Instagram, found my music, and he made this for me and it is one of the most precious things I think anyone has ever given me. It has my family tree on it. So, I love that. Little cello shadow box. A very old tambourine. There's my cello. And then here, my keyboard. Right now I'm working on these things two and three part inventions by Bach for the piano. I'm not a pianist, so this is quite challenging for me, but it's good because it's um, 
Yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely getting better at piano. It's definitely challenging me. Over here. Okay, you're gonna laugh at me, but I don't trust my external hard drives, nor do I trust my computer, so I also back up my stuff on CDs and DVDs, and I keep them in there. I know it's an ancient technology, but, you know, some form of backup is good. These, I don't really read a lot of fiction, but these are pretty interesting. They're about musicians during World War II. We have a lot more books downstairs, but these are what I have um, up here just because I, I like to reference them a lot. Um, this is great. This is wonderful because, you know, it's C.S. Lewis, so always wonderful. This is a tough read, Pierre Boulez. Um, maybe it's just because I'm not as intelligent as I wish I, wish I was, but uh, it's kind of tricky to get through. But you might find it interesting if you are very interested in very, very modern music. The Art of Practicing is great. I would definitely recommend that you read this. Really wonderful. Uh, this is the biography of Richard Rogers. currently reading that. This is very, very helpful. Instrumentation and orchestration. I had this for um, one of my college classes, my orchestration class. Uh, this is the Nadia Boulanger biography, which I love. I love this book. She was a, a French composer, teacher, pianist, uh, music critic, basically everything, and I hope that I can be just like her whenever I grow up, you know. Um, this is Never a Dull Moment. I haven't read this yet, but it's, uh, it's on my reading list. The End of Early Music. Um, I read that in one of my college classes. It's pretty interesting if you're into that. And then here we have my degree and my award saying that I was the top music student of my class. And then underneath I have more textbooks. I kept all of my textbooks, anything related to music. Um, I just think that that's a, a good thing to do if any of you are in college. Don't throw them away and don't just rent them. You'll be happy that you saved them. Under here, just a ton of sheet music. I have more, but it's um, some of them are in boxes. Currently, what I'm working on, this, the WC Cello Sonata with uh, piano. My mom and I are going to try to play it together. It's quite challenging, but I'm looking forward to learning it and all that. This is a Violin Cello Duet by Ravel. This is also quite challenging, um, but I'm hoping to play it with my dad. And then over here, you can see the audio that I'm recording. This is Logic. I use Logic on this computer, which I guess I also stole this from one of my family members. It used to be my brother's, Jonathan's, but um, he didn't need it anymore, so I just kind of took it. So anyways, Logic, and then on my MacBook, I use Ableton. I'm learning, I'm learning Ableton right now. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's always hard learning a new program, but Ableton is honestly pretty, pretty user-friendly, not that hard to learn. And then over here is my SSD port for this camera. I'm using my cinema camera. And then over here, sorry, the floor is really, really creaky. Do you hear that? Maybe not, I don't know. All right here is my PreSonus audio box, which is what I run my mics through. Um, it also takes MIDI, I send that through to either my MacBook or my Mac, depending on whether I'm using Ableton or Logic. Let's see what else is over here. I don't think, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so exciting. I bought these amazing blackout curtains and it makes it so cozy in here. I love it. Like this, and then you turn on the light. Wait, just a second. I got this. Look at how cozy this is. I love it in here so much. Sorry, that was supposed to be a smooth pan. Let me um, focus this and try it again. Smooth pan. And here, is where I store all of my garbage. 
all of the music things go up there. Oy. And then I've never really been known for my pristine cable management, but let it be known, I am trying. My cello cases in here, lighting kit, more cases. I also keep my cello chair in here just so that it's out of the way. Filing cabinet uh, because I'm an adult. And then all of my arts and crafts, which maybe I will cut in uh, some pictures of my paintings that I've been working on recently for a music video. All of my stands, tripods, canvases, all that. But yeah. So that pretty much sums it up. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope that this footage is not too dizzying. But yeah, that ends the tour. All right, so I'm going to talk about this BenQ Bluetooth speaker with electrostatic technology. I've never owned a Bluetooth speaker before, which I may have said in the beginning of this video, but because of that, I really don't have a lot to compare this to, but I can honestly say as my first Bluetooth speaker, I am very, very impressed and you have no idea how cool it is. Well, I guess you probably do have an idea because all of you are probably living in the modern world and I'm late to the awesomeness that is turning on your phone and hearing music come out on the other side of the room. I think that's amazing. So yes, I love this very much. And before I get into the details, uh, they suggest that you try this out on a flat, sturdy surface, of course, because you don't want to hear any rattling. These fold in and out, so have them folded out, have it facing towards you, and whenever you sit at this level where your ears are equal with the speakers, the sound is amazing. I know that you're probably not just going to sit in front of a Bluetooth speaker all day, but if you choose to do so, you will not be disappointed. About some of the features, the stand comes separately. I think that's a good thing to have. I like the stand. Also, let me interject this. I really like the look of this. I love the neutral brown shiny thing. It fits my aesthetic very well. Anyhow, on top here we have the volume controls, we have the play and pause button, and then this mode button. And of course the on and off and the Bluetooth button back here. They do recommend that you use the Bluetooth uh, capability rather than using the USB, although there is that option. You can use a USB connection, but um, it gives a better sound if you use Bluetooth. Just going off of what the box says, because I don't think I, I can articulate this as well as they do, <laughs> but um, they say that it has three unique equalization profiles. So one is pure minimal equalization, two, warm, richer sound with more bass, three, vivid emphasis on lead vocals and instruments. I can attest to all of that. I've been experimenting with the different modes while listening to different genres, and it highlights all of the different qualities of these genres um, very, very well. So for example, in the higher range, um, I was listening to Bonobo's music, and he has really thick textures. Well, not necessarily thick, but very detailed textures, and the high the high ends just pop, it's so good, but it's not an obnoxious pop. You get to hear all of the little details um, very crisp, crisply and clearly. And then in the mid-range, they say that it's good for listening to vocals. Um, I don't listen to a whole lot of music that has vocals in it, but I can say that I listen to classical music on this and you know how stringed instruments are supposed to replicate the human voice. This does such a good job of bringing out the cello lines in an orchestra, viola, all of the string voices, they just sing out. It sounds amazing on here. And then in the lower range, um, it has that nice uh, punchy, I guess is a good word, punchy bass. Um, I don't listen to a lot of bass heavy music, so I can't tell you if the bass is loud enough or not, if you are the type of person to listen to a lot of bass heavy music. Um, I will definitely be experimenting with that um, in, in the days and weeks to come. But um, I don't know. I don't know if it'll satisfy you if you really like a lot of bass. It makes me happy and that's all I can say about that. But you'll have to try it for yourself. 
It does have up to 12 hours of continuous play, which is pretty great. It has, and I'm just looking at the box here because I don't want to get it wrong, it has support for 16-bit digital audio via micro USB, and it has stereo line out support. So that is that. I'm very happy with this product. If you are in the market for a Bluetooth speaker, then you should definitely consider the BenQ Trevolo, Trevolo speaker. Does it have a, yes, Trevolo 2. I want to make sure I get that right. And I will have all of the, the links, um, all the details in the description below. So if you are in fact interested, please go and check that out. And I guess that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and do keep an eye out for my next music video. It's coming very soon.